Okay, focus. We're going to first start with the distance formula. But before we even get to that, we're going to do a little looking at uh, actual uh, points to see some straight up things. These first three questions don't even ask about the distance formula. Uh, it is more critical thinking on your part by looking at the points first and seeing is it a line or not? Is it a. So let's say, and I've got a little grid down here. I'm going to ignore that and I'm not going to write it. Let's say I had a point right here and a point right here. That that would go from here to here. What kind of line would that be? A nonlinear. Non if it went from it went from here to here, what kind of line would it be? Non positive. Non proportional. Yeah, that. No would it be vertical, yes. horizontal, horizontal, or vertical? Okay, vertical, vertical means up and down. Horizontal. Vertical. Horizontal means le think horizon. When you think horizontal, think horizon. The horizon, you look out and it's flat across, right? That's horizon. So you have three types of line. Horizontal, which means it goes left to right. Vertical, which means it goes up and down. And diagonal means it goes in between those. So if I had a line that was horizontal and went from here to here, what, what would the points share in common? I have two points. I have an X and a Y, right? If it went from here to here, would the x points be the same? Yes. Yeah. Well, the x is going to change each time, isn't it? it is yeah. But the y would be the same, wouldn't it? Oh. How about a how about a, a vertical line that went up and down? What what number would stay the same all the time? The yeah. x. Yeah, the x. Well, let's look at these. So when we're looking at our lines, the first thing we got to do is decide: Does this have x coordinates that are the same? Yes. No. Look at the first. One there. No. The first one is X, right? Yes. X and Y. Are the X's the same? No. How about the Y's? Yes. So what kind of line is this? If the Y's are all the same, what? It's a horizontal line. How would you find the dip or the length of this horizontal line? I mean, we could get a fancy distance for me, but really, it's just the difference in X, right? What is negative 8 three. minus minus 5? 3. And since you're always going to go the absolute value, the whole length of the line would be 3, right? Let's look at this one here. Are the x the same? Uh, Are the y the same? No. What kind of line is it? Is it vertical, horizontal, or diagonal? Diagonal. It is diagonal. Yeah. Now, for this one, we'd use something called the distance formula. And we're going to get to that moment. That'll give us the length here, I forgot over here, the length is 3, right? This one, we use the distance formula. That was an interesting mixture of letters there. All right, the last one. Let's look at our x the same. <coughs> our x the same. Yes. Lane, our x the same. On number 3, are the x coordinates the same? So if the x coordinates are the same, what kind of line is it? Is it horizontal, yeah. vertical, or diagonal? Uh, horizontal. horizontal means it goes straight across. Oh, straight. Right. It is vertical. So again, if they're the same, to find out the length of the line, I'll take 0 minus 100. What's 0 minus 100? It's minus 100, but we get the absolute value. So what would the length of this line be? 100. It's the difference between them, right? Mm -hmm. So, we're going to talk about the distance formula. The distance formula was created to basically reenact making a right triangle. Now, it works great if you've got graph paper and your triangle is small, but if your triangle is something like uh, an Olympic stadium, <coughs> You're trying to roof an Olympic stadium. That triangle's pretty big. Getting a piece of graph paper that large it's gonna take some time. would take some time. It's easier to use something like the distance formula. So here we've got some points. I've got a point. I'm going to make myself three points. One here, one here, and one here. So make your points the same. Now, uh, 
That was a terrible line. Okay. Now, what I want you to notice, coordinate-wise, let's look at the first point down here, P. So let's say P is X sub 1, Y sub 1, right? Sure. Well, let's look at here. What is the X coordinate for P? Assuming these are all 1s. What's uh, the one? X? 1, 2. 1, one comma, comma 2, right? Let's look up here at Q. I've got X2, Y2. So what's X? Come on, X, all the way across eight. for Q. Eight. Eight. eight, comma. Eight. No. Count them up. Six. Two. Oh. Eight, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. Oh. Eight, comma, seven, right? Sure. Well, let's look down here at R. It's kind of funny. It's eight. R's X coordinate comes from the top one, right? And its y coordinate comes from the left one, which is? Two. two. So it is a combination of these two. So if I was using, if I was drawing this triangle, I could find the, dis the difference between these two sections as, uh, looking here, oh, let's start with this one here. So let's look at x2. What's x2? Eight, Eight minus one is? Seven. Seven. So I could do x2 minus x1, right? Wow. And I brought 7. Is that not what I did? Have you seen this before somewhere? No. It's the bottom of the slope of the line, right? Yep. Ooh. Okay, up here, if I did y2 minus y1, what's y2? 7. 7 minus... Y1? Two. Two. And what would the length be? Y1. Y sub 1. Uh, y sub 1? 5. So the length would be 5. Now, I could easily use the Pythagorean theorem right now, couldn't I? Probably. So here's what I did. Literally, I said the distance of C, the distance of C equals... The square root of this side plus this side, right? Sure, why not? But I got this side by saying x squared minus x1, oops, x, x2 minus x1, and I squared it, right? So 7 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. Literally, 5 squared plus 7 squared, right? So you can just do that on the top of the Yeah, do it. Wow. So given, given what we had, that would be D is the square root of X sub, X sub 2 is 8 minus X sub 1, which is 1 squared plus Y sub 2 which is 7 minus y sub 1, which is 2 squared. <laughs> Do it on your calculators. I was going to say, you just prime it that way. Uh, yeah. uh, like it's quite without half of you. We're missing half. We're missing over half. <laughs> There's only nine of us. What would you get, Wesley? You didn't do it? Will, what'd you get? Um, still working. <laughs> what'd you get, John? Back of my eyelids. What'd you get, Reed? Uh, 8.60. 8.60. We'll just round it off there. So D is roughly 8.6, which fits because it's that would make it the longest side, wouldn't it? So, do you see kind of where they got the distance formula? They set all this up with a big... Now, imagine, like I said, you're doing a football stadium. You would not want graph paper. Mm -hmm. It might be easier to know the X and Y grids, or in our case, maybe the grid coordinates on the Earth. And we could use this formula to figure out the actual length of it. So, let's do a couple down here. We've got some. 
Now we got points. First thing you guys need to do when you get your points, and the thing that I don't see, I see the least of, is go x sub one, y sub one, x sub two, y sub two. Do that on your points. That way, when you're starting to type <coughs> things in, there's somebody that are going for speed versus accuracy, and it doesn't work in math. Mm -hmm. I should make a game. What's it called? For football, but for with cars. Car football. That'd be so much fun. All right. So D equals. Remember, we got that big square root, right? X sub two. What's x sub two? What's x sub two? Two. Two minus x sub one squared plus y sub two. Four negative four. Will. Whoa. No. How about if you follow along? So what's y sub 2? 4. Negative 4. Negative 4. Minus y sub 1, which is? 2. Negative 3. Negative 3. Negative three. So remember, what happens when I've got a minus a negative? What does it become? Positive. So I can just do this 2. The square root of 2 minus 6 squared plus negative 4 plus 3 squared. That's a Wait, Ooh, I've got it. Plus well, plus 3, right? Negative 4, we had a minus a minus 3, didn't we? What happens when you have minus a minus? Do you want us to round? Yeah, um, and it says, if it doesn't give you anything, generally round to the tenths. I'll let everyone do it. How about you get a calculator and do it? What? We'll let him, Lane, give me a moment and I'll let, I'll let Lane give an answer. What'd you get, Lane? 4.1. 4 point, give me the whole thing you had. 4.123. Okay, and so 2 was definitely 5 or less, so 4.1. Is that, does that look like it would fit given these low numbers? Yeah, it's not, it's not huge. So let's look at this one. This one's got decimals. It really doesn't change anything, does it? Remember, x sub 1, y sub 1, mark them out x sub 2, y sub 2. Did you mark yours out? If you mark them out, when you get to the formula, it's just a matter of filling in pieces you're missing. If you don't mark them out, then you have to mentally remember which one you call point 0.1 and point 0.2. Here, at our level, it's pretty easy to remember two points. Picture the point in life where you're going to get to bigger points. So what is D equal? D equals the square root of x sub 2. What's x sub 2? Negative 0 0.4. Oh, buddy, where are you going? X sub 2 is negative 0 0.4 minus x sub 1. Those of you working it and not writing it down, you're doing yourself a disfavor. So what's x sub 1? John, what's x sub 1? Sub 1 is, let's see, 0 0.5. Remember that's squared plus y sub 2, which is, Gavin, what's y sub 2? Uh, negative 1.2. Minus y sub 1? 1 1.3. Good job. Squared, right? Mm -hmm. Now type them all in. Now here's one of those where rounding. They gave you answers that all were to the tenth, right? So you can you can pretty safely assume they want an answer to the nearest tenth. If they gave you answers that were all to the hundredth, then round it there. What you got, Wesley? Two point seven. Huh. Give me the whole thing. Two point six five seven. Good. Two point six five. And he said that five is five or greater, he rounded up. Good job. You guys see how to use the distance formula? Yes. Uh, once you get a handle on it, it's certainly easier than drawing a triangle. It is certainly easier than plotting the triangle out and drawing it. Now, for teeny weeny <coughs> ones, okay, maybe. But when you get like decimals, imagine trying to plot that out on a graph. 
I mean, it's amusing to watch you do it, but it's not efficient, right? Um, so kind of show you where they came up with the distance formula. You guys are the same thing as you go through math. Maybe one of you will come up with some unique formula that nobody's ever, and then you should give it a really neat name. That's really hard to pronounce. Like the Balderas, the Balderas theorem. And then school kids will have to learn it. And they'll be constantly cursing your name like the Pythagorean. Okay. <laughs> Any questions on distance formula? This is 